Good evening and welcome to News at 6. I'm Vishal Dahiya. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Delhi's Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung resigns from his post. His office says he will return to his first love, that is academics. War of words in Uttar Pradesh. Prime Minister Modi targets Rahul Gandhi and Congress leadership with taunts and sarcasm in Varanasi, questions its opposition to demonetization. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi to Modi's attack in Behraj asks the crowd why isn't the Prime Minister responding to his charges? And Ravi Chandra Ashwin named in the ICC test team for the year 2016. No place for Virat Kohli, who is named captain of ICC's ODI team of the year. Let's take a look uh, on the news in details. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today hit out at the critics of demonetization, alleging that just the way Pakistan gives cover fire to terrorists, the opposition is covering corrupt people. The Prime Minister also urged the youth to help him in his mission and move towards online banking, reserving his taunts for Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi, who had promised to expose him. Modi said that Gandhi exposes himself every time he speaks. A day after the Congress vice president accused him of receiving crores in kickbacks as chief minister of Gujarat, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday took a dig at Rahul Gandhi. In a speech dripping with sarcasm, he chose to attack the Congress leadership in order to defend the measures his government has taken for the country. <laughs> On Wednesday, in the Prime Minister's hometown Mehsana in Gujarat, Rahul Gandhi alleged that income tax rates had revealed that the Sahara Group paid off Modi nine times in six months since 2013. He also said that computer records from a Birla Group official during raids in 2013 refer to bribes to Gujarat CM. The Supreme Court had earlier said it didn't find any merit in these allegations. <laughs> The Prime Minister's broadside also included his predecessor Manmohan Singh. Manmohan Singh has critiqued Modi's decision to ban high-value currency notes. In a newspaper editorial titled Making of a Mammoth Tragedy, Dr. Singh predicted a ripple effect on GDP and job creation and grievous injury to the honest Indian due to the demonetization decision of the Modi government. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi seemed unfazed by the attack by Prime Minister. Sticking to his guns about personal corruption done by the Prime Minister, he reiterated the questions he had raised at the Mahesana rally. He asked the Prime Minister whether any money was given to him. Unfazed by the Prime Minister ridiculing his charge of personal corruption, Rahul Gandhi on Thursday stuck to his guns, reiterating his charges against the PM. 
Raking up the issue of corruption once again, he asked Narendra Modi what was in the 10 packets allegedly given to him by the Sahara Group when he was the Gujarat Chief Minister. Narendra Modi ji, ये सवाल मैंने आपसे नहीं पूछा ये सवाल हिंदुस्तान के युवा ने हिंदुस्तान के गरीब लोगों ने आपसे पूछे हैं सवाल ये है कि प्रधानमंत्री ने भ्रष्टाचार किया या नहीं आप आप मेरा जितना मजाक उड़ाना चाहते उड़ाओ मगर आप देश के युवाओं का और मेरे सवाल का जवाब दो Earlier, the Prime Minister had ridiculed the Congress leader, saying he was happy that Gandhi has finally learned to speak. However, the Congress leader continued his tirade against the Prime Minister. He said his party would support the NDA government in its fight against corruption, but also emphasized that demonetization or note ban was not against black money, but the poor of India. भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ कोई भी कदम उठाए छोटा से छोटा कदम बड़ा कदम कांग्रेस पार्टी उनको पूरा समर्थन देगी सेन परसेंट समर्थन देगी मगर नोटबंदी का ये जो डिसीजन था ये भ्रष्टाचार के खिलाफ नहीं था ये काले धन के खिलाफ नहीं था ये हिंदुस्तान के गरीब लोगों के खिलाफ था ये हिंदुस्तान के कमजोर लोगों के खिलाफ था At a rally in the PM's home turf in Gujarat's Mehsana on Wednesday, Rahul had accused Modi of taking money from Sahara and Birla groups when he was the Gujarat chief minister. BJP had rejected the Congress leader's allegations as baseless, shameful and malified. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. In a surprise move today, Delhi's Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung submitted his resignation. The LG office was quoted as saying that he will be returning to his first love, that is academics. Jung's tenure was marked by tensions between his office and Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, who has often accused him of obstructing the government's work at the behest of centre government. Jung today, however, thanked Kejriwal for his help in office after submitting his resignation. Najib Jung is an IAS officer of 1973 batch. He resigned from the job and joined academics. Before becoming Delhi's Lieutenant Governor, Jung was the Vice Chancellor of Jamia Millia Islamia University in Delhi. Reacting to the news, the BJP told media that it was Jung's personal decision to quit. The Congress, however, has alleged that Jung was probably not happy with the BJP, the ruling party at the centre. And for more on this, we have with us our colleague Anu Diwan. Anu, despite the fact that uh, both uh, the Delhi's Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung and the Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal did not uh, go along very well and there were a lot of uh, uh, you know, issues on which they had a tussle. But it seemed uh, that Jung had uh, some tacit support from uh, the central government. Uh, why then this sudden step of uh, stepping down from his post as Lieutenant Governor? Yeah, actually, Vishal, it is really a surprise and a sudden move by Lieutenant Governor. Although he hasn't mentioned anything in his resignation, but he has specified that he has quit just because to move back to his academics. But Vishal, before going to that, we have seen that during the tenure of two years since the Ahmadmi Party came in the power, he d he has not maintained any cordial relationship with them. But with even after uh, sharing these type of relationship, uh, BJP always used to support him. But 
although he was appointed by the Congress, but he still had the support of BJP. Since now the sources, we are standing here at the LG House, and the LG House sources are claiming that he was being asked to quit. And uh, Vishal, I just want to uh, give your reference that few years, few months back only, Subramaniam Swami has said that uh, Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung is the man of Congress. Ahmed Patel, he has specified that. Although none of the BJP members came in front and uh, 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 said uh, anything, said anything like this, but uh, this is the uh, this is the only thing which we are getting with the incident which we are getting is that that he uh, LG House sources are claiming that he was being asked to uh, resign. So that he uh, he has uh, sent a messenger, special messenger to the central government with his resignation. Well, thank you, Anu Diwan. Uh, thanks for this, uh, this piece of information. It seems uh, the sources are indicating that uh, the lieutenant governor of Delhi was asked to resign, but it will be a while before uh, this picture is be becomes a little more clearer. Let's take a look at some other news now. The BSE, Sensex and Nifty on Thursday fell for the seventh day in a row as worries about the impact of demonetization continue to weigh on the market sentiment. The benchmark BSE Sensex plunged 263 points to end at 25,979.60, while the NSE Nifty fell by 82 points to end at 7,979.10. According to analysts, stocks of metal, oil and gas, banking, FMCG, PSU, consumer durables and auto sectors led the fall. Brockers said sentiment remained subdued in the absence of any positive trigger amidst sustained capital outflows by foreign funds in view of the approaching year end. Let's now take a look at some more news and updates from the Nationwide. In a setback to the Congress in poll-bound Goa, its legislator Pandurang Madhulikar on Thursday resigned as member of Legislative Assembly and joined the Bhatia Janta Party in the presence of Chief Minister Lakshmikant Parsekar. A three-time MLA from constituency and former State Transport Minister in the second Congress legislator to quit the party ahead of the polls. The Uttar Pradesh cabinet has cleared a proposal to include 17 OBCs in the scheduled caste list. The OBCs who have been included are Kahar, Kashyap, Kevat, Malla, Nishad, Kumar, Prajapati, among others. The proposal seemed to aim at working, wooing the OBCs in the upcoming assembly elections. It will now be sent to center for its clearance. A BJP delegation from Manipur today met Home Minister Rajnath Singh over the United Naga Council blockade issue in Delhi. The delegation appealed to the minister to take necessary steps to bring back normalcy in the state. The delegation also conveyed to the Home Minister that the state government is not properly utilizing the central forces sent by the union government. The economic blockade is going on in the state for the last 50 days. Let's take a short break here. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Biology happening at almost every scale on this campus, from the molecular scale to the scale of the study of ecosystems. Been involved in discovering mechanisms in, that are fundamental to all cells that are creating these endocytic processes. If you think about CAS as, uh, as interbreeding 
communities, small interbreeding communities, one can just see the consequences of consanguinity that caste would inevitably bring. Watch Eureka with Professor Satyajit Mayer, Director NCBS Bengaluru on Rajya Sabha Television. Harappan sites are a treasure trove of sophisticated pottery. These creations show tremendous advances by the potter's wheel. Creations like the perforated jar, the copper axe, the chisel and knives astound even present-day archaeologists. Figurines depicting yoga poses, chess pieces display a complexity unsurpassed even by later day civilizations, all of which make the Harappan civilization truly unique. Welcome back. Expressing concerns over the increasing tensions between India and Pakistan along the LOC in recent months, outgoing United Nations Chief Ban Ki-moon urged the two neighbours to resolve their differences through dialogue and exercise restraint. Secretary-General, whose 10-year tenure will end this month, encouraged both countries to continue their efforts to deal with their disputes peacefully and through dialogue. The UN chief has avoided becoming embroiled in the Kashmir dispute, which India said is a bilateral issue recognised in the 1972 Shimla Agreement. Pakistan has repeatedly brought up the Kashmir issue at various UN fora, but its attempt to internationalize the Kashmir issue did not find resonance among the rest of the 191 members of United Nations. Russian President Vladimir Putin attended a memorial ceremony on Thursday for Andrei Karlov, the Russian ambassador to Turkey, who was gunned down in Ankara on Monday. Diplomats and family members gathered at the Russian Foreign Ministry to bid farewell to Karlov, who was 62. Putin briefly spoke to Karlov's wife during the ceremony and paid his condolence. Putin has said he knew Karlov personally and posthumously given Karlov the Hero of Russia Award, the country's highest military medal. Meanwhile, Turkish authorities have identified the assassin who have worked for Ankara's riot police. Russia has also flown a team of investigators to Turkey to help with the investigations. Russia and Turkey have branded the assassination as a failed attempt to derail a rapprochement between Moscow and Ankara, which has seen them cooperate more closely over Syria, where they have backed different sides in the conflict. Vladimir Putin's spokesman has described the murder of Russia's ambassador in Turkey as a serious blow to the country's prestige. Both Russia and Turkey have said that they would work together so that mutual relations are not affected. Türkiye'nin genel Suriye politikasının değişmesi anlamında da etkisi olacağını düşünüyorum. Çünkü bu eylemden sonra Rusya Türkiye'ye daha fazla talepkar olacak ve Türkiye'nin daha fazla taviz vermesini isteyecek ve Türkiye'nin kendi pozisyonuna yaklaşmasını isteyecek. Evacuations continue in Syria's besieged city of Aleppo. Rebels and civilians are being moved out of the city in buses. They are mostly headed for the Idib province. Meanwhile, the United Nations has constituted a team to probe war crimes and human rights abuses committed during the Syrian war. The UN General Assembly voted to establish a special team that will probe human rights abuses committed during the Syrian war. The team will collect, consolidate, preserve and analyze evidence as well as prepare cases on war crimes and human rights abuses. However, the resolution did not find favor with all member states. Syria's ambassador to the UN Bashar Jafri told the General Assembly before the vote that the resolution is a violation of the UN Charter against interfering in the affairs of member states. إنما تضمنه مشروع القرار المعروض أمامكم اليوم يثبت نفاقا كبيرا وفجوة هائلة بين النظرية والتطبيق فكيف الحال إذا كان من سيمول عمل هذه الآلية هم رعاة الإرهاب في سوريا وعلى رأسهم السعودية وقطر وبعض الدول الأوروبية التي تفننت في تصدير إرهاب أوروبي محض إلى بلادي وإلى العراق 
Meanwhile, in Syria's Aleppo, militants continued to retreat to Idlib province in the west. Evacuations of civilians also continued as snow fell in the besieged city. The withdrawal process, however, was slow as the deal made between the government and opposition militants dictates that pro-government supporters must simultaneously withdraw from the bases of anti-government militants. On Wednesday, 20 buses carrying militants and their families departed Aleppo, heading for Idlib. In return, four buses and two ambulances arrived in Aleppo from Idlib. There was agreement just to be fulfilled from either parts and we fulfilled the part which concerns us. But they broke it and that's why we have to stop till they finish what they agreed with them. They broke this agreement and we will not allow that. We should rec recommend that all the agreements should be fulfilled. 100%. The Syrian army is said to have taken control of Aleppo on Wednesday after the last batch of fighters was evacuated. But a UN official and rebels said evacuations were not yet completed. There are around 2,000 fighters and civilians still waiting to be evacuated. Bureau Report, Raja Sabha TV. Now let's take a look at some other international news in Global Buzz. The death toll from the massive explosion at Mexico's best-known fireworks market climbed to 34 on Thursday. Meanwhile, authorities worked round the clock to identify the dead and treat the dozens injured in the incident. The authorities also added that the fireworks market will resume business as soon as possible. The explosion also left 12 other people missing and 58 injured. German police raided two apartments in Berlin's neighborhood of Risberg on Thursday in order to find the suspect in the Berlin Christmas market truck attack. Meanwhile, four people who had been in contact with the suspect have reportedly been arrested. It comes amid an international manhunt for Tunisian national who is a suspect of being behind the tragedy which left 12 people dead. Three people suffered minor injuries after a truck driver damaged 41 vehicles during a police change in Thailand's capital, Bangkok, on Thursday. According to reports, the suspect mistakenly drove into a bus lane and did not stop when the police attempted to stop him. China on Thursday said that people should not read too much into last week's U.S. drone incident. Apparently, a Chinese naval vessel picked up a U.S. underwater drone in the disputed South China Sea. However, they returned the drone on Tuesday after what it said were friendly talks with the United States. A massive fire engulfed about 140 buildings on Thursday in small Japanese city on the Japan sea coast. The blaze started in the morning at a restaurant in the city, fanned by high winds spreading to 56 kilometers per hour. It had reached about 140 houses and other buildings by mid-afternoon. Ravi Chandra Ashwin, who was named the ICC Test Cricketer of the Year 2016, as well as the Cricketer of the Year 2016 in the ICC Awards announced today. The 30-year-old became the second Indian player to hold both the awards at the same time, following up on Rahul Dravid's feat in 2004. Meanwhile, Virat Kohli was named captain of the ODI team, but in a big surprise, was left out of the test team, led by Alistair Cook. The International Cricket Council on Thursday announced the ICC Test and ODI teams of the year 2016, but not without a surprise. Virat Kohli was left out of the test team despite his superb performance this year. The Indian test captain amassed a staggering 1,215 runs in 2016 from 12 tests at an average of 75.93. This amazing record included three double tons. England captain Alastair Cook was named captain of the test side for the third time as Ravi Chandran Ashwin remained the only Indian player in the team. Joe Root, David Warner and Kane Williamson were picked for the third successive year while Dale Steyn made it for the eighth time in nine years. 
The test team has four players from England, three from Australia and one each from New Zealand, India, Sri Lanka and South Africa. Kohli, however, was named captain of the ODI team, which featured two other Indians as well, Rohit Sharma and Ravindra Jadeja. The ODI team has three players each from Australia, India and South Africa and one each from England and West Indies. In the annual awards, it turned out to be a double delight for Ravichandran Ashwin as he became only the third Indian player to win the Sir Garfield Sobers Trophy for being named the ICC Cricketer of the Year. The off-spinner was also named ICC Test Cricketer of the Year, becoming only the second Indian player after Rahul Dravid to back the two coveted prizes in the same year. Ashwin, who picked up 72 wickets from 12 tests this year, also contributed with the bat scoring sensational 612 runs in tests. The 30-year-old had finished 2015 as the number one ranked test bowler in the world. In other awards, South Africa's wicketkeeper batsman Quinton de Kock was named the ICC ODI Cricketer of the Year. West Indies' Carlos Brathwaite won the ICC T20I Performance of the Year award for his match-winning 34 not out of 10 balls in the ICC World T20 Final against England. Bangladesh fast bowling sensation Mustafizur Rahman was named ICC Emerging Cricketer of the Year, while Pakistan test keeper Ms. Baul Haq was given the Spirit of Cricket award. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Let's take a look at some more sports news in Sports Wrap Up. Mahesh Bhupati has been named the new non-playing captain of the Davis Cup team. Bhupati will take charge after the Asia Oceana Zone Group 1 home tie against New Zealand in Pune from February 3rd to 5th. The multiple Grand Slam winner will replace Anand Amritraj, who will feature as non-playing captain for the last time in the tie against New Zealand. Former South African cricketer Elvero Peterson was banned for, banned for two years for corruption charges. Peterson has admitted several breaches of CSA's anti-corruption code. The two-year ban will be effective from November 12th this year. He is the sixth player to be banned following a corruption scandal which led to former international player Ram Bobby being banned for 20 years. Bayern Munich went into the winter break three points clear at the top of following an emphatic win over second-placed RB Lizig. Goals from Diego and Alonso put the home side firmly in control before Robert made it 3-0 from the penalty spot. It was just a second league loss of the season for Lizic, who are in their debut campaign. That's all in News at 6. Keep watching Rajspa Television.